The significance of this factory is its status as the model factory. It was a complete revolution in design. The clay came in one end and the cup went out the other end. It was just clear. As soon as we arrived at the site and we started to try and understand this process, it was very clear what the original design was trying to do in terms of these perpendicular ranges and the way that the pottery moved through from clay to cup past these banks of ovens and across these perpendicular ranges. It was probably only occupying about 50% of the available space. So it was a real opportunity to look at this layout and make some suggestions about ways that the rest of the site could be consolidated, freeing up a bit of visitor access into what we consider to be the star attractions of the site. Up there as being the primary kind of like requirements of this plan was to conserve this special character, this pottery had evolved over those years. So they said to us, we want a light touch solution, something that mends things that are broke, that pinpoint, almost like surgery, keyhole surgery, bits of infrastructure to make this thing work again. And the things that are obsolete, let's interpret them, let's add them to the richness, the experience. We were struck on the first day we turned up about, you know, the character of the site sort of very robust character. It's very industrial. It looks like you can sort of knock it about. But also, I think um, we agreed that it was very fragile, actually. Uh, it could be very easily lost. This idea of saving the factory was a split into two things, conserving the past and conserving it in its magical atmosphere, but securing the future as well. So that's where the workshops come in, diversifying the different economic streams on the site, environmental upgrades, putting in insulation, sealing the windows, tackling a lot of those building at risk issues, but also making it a viable factory to operate in. I've been here like nine years. I've seen roofs leaking and no windows and birds flying about, you know, pigeons and and one year, it was that bad a winter, all the pipes froze up. The architects were very careful to ask questions to understand what this building's used for and what, what the, the needs are of the, the people using it. All the ware that was produced up this floor, we used to have to carry all them down the wooden stairs. Now the building's been renovated. We've got lifts, which saved our legs, probably for another 10 years on me and Danny's wares. We were flagging a couple of years ago. So yeah, that's, that's been a great help. Something that struck everybody is that sometimes it's difficult to see where the regeneration works actually occurred. And I think that is what's so great about it, the fact that it's been done so sensitively. It's now a stable and secure building, but it's still true to what, what it should be, which is a great Victorian pottery. The regeneration of a dilapidated building such as this does have an impact on the community around it. It links us with our heritage and what we were so good at. I think the most challenging thing is the fact that we had to maintain production of burly pottery throughout the whole project. So that meant moving areas of production around the factory as the building works progressed. And that was a really big challenge because we needed to maintain our production. We're a working business and when you're working together, then it's possible. This particular project has been done so sympathetically, so empathetically, not removing all the old signage, not removing the hundred layers of paint, but actually it's keeping those because that evidences the tangible physical links that we've got to our history. That's the ethos of the whole practice. Sustainability, light touch, embodied energy. That's where we think our practice is at. We always say that we're really interested in the history of buildings, but we're so much more interested in the future of buildings. Let's use these fantastic artefacts that are amongst us and unlock them and, and you know, get people excited about them again and get using them. You wouldn't be an architect if you didn't have a massive ego. But what keeps our ego in check is listening to people. People make our projects richer. People ground us. They make our architecture great.